Today, we are spending eight hours in Air New Zealand business class across two separate flights. Our first flight is three hours from Sydney to Auckland. Then we have a short layover where we'll check out the Air New Zealand flagship lounge. And finally, we'll board our five hour flight to Tahiti. We are super grateful any time that we have the opportunity to fly business class. But I have heard that the configuration of the seats on Air New Zealand business class are some of the worst flying in the sky. This is so weird. So we'll try it out for ourselves and give you our thoughts. <laughs> Plus, after flying on hundreds of flights, we have finally come up with an official review system that we're gonna be debuting in this video, and we're gonna be ranking the flight on 10 different factors. So join us on this eight hour journey and see how this flight scores out of a potential 100 points. And last but not least, because this is Daily Drop, we are also going to be showing you how you can book this flight that costs us almost $4,000 for a fraction of that using miles and points. Okay, for our first ever daily drop ranking, I'm gonna give Air New Zealand's check-in experience a nine out of 10 because it doesn't get much better. Why a nine? We didn't get escorted through like we were flying Lufthansa first class and nobody picked us up in a golf cart. That's honestly wow, the only we're way going there. it could have gotten better. <laughs> okay. I mean, you gotta leave room for the no, best right. of the best. You're right. So if you're flying Air New Zealand business class out of Sydney, you get access to the Air New Zealand business lounge, but because we have the Amex Platinum card, we also have access to the Centurion lounge and we have about an hour Hour and a half until our plane boards. I think we'll try off a. This might be the freakiest thing I've ever seen in an airport. Speaking of the American Express card, link below if anybody wants to sign up for that and support Daily Drop. Maybe wait to see how our lounge review goes first. <laughs> I told myself I was going to take it easy because we have multiple lounges and a big flight to go on, but I just couldn't resist the parfait stand, the potatoes, or the beans. And I made myself a pancake. I got a soy latte. Mm. Okay, we have 45 minutes until the plane boards and we're gonna see if we can squeeze in two more lounges. We saw that there's a Singapore Airlines lounge here and our Star Alliance gold status should get us in there. So before we head to the Air New Zealand lounge, we're gonna go check out Singapore. So I think there are pros and cons to the Centurion Lounge in Sydney versus what you get in the US. First of all, you can bring guests in for free, but I will say I don't feel like the food was quite as good as what you would expect in a Centurion Lounge in the US. Okay, let's go to the Singapore Lounge. Wow, it smells amazing. Little fruit and yogurt section. Ooh, potatoes. Self-serve wine bar. I think we probably just timed this right, but this is so much more empty than the Centurion Lounge. Check out this view though. Centurion or Singapore? I'm so partial to Centurion lounges. The view is better. I'm gonna go get another latte. Cheers. Oh yeah. Look at those lights. And they're playing my favorite band. It's the prettiest and the best one. Let's see all the food stacks up. Mushroom frittata. Potatoes and beans. What kind of yogurt is that, is that one? Coconut. Sealed the deal. This is my favorite lounge. It's definitely the most crowded lounge, but it also has the most space. There's also a much better bar set up, and they'll make coffee for you. Thank you. Okay, right now you have to make a decision between the three. I don't know. I have no problem finding two. Didn't have to wait. I will say Air New Zealand wins for the best light fixture. Okay, overall lounge experience? Zero complaints. I've got to give it an eight out of 10, but that probably speaks more for the Sydney airport and the lounges that we actually have access to because we got to hop around at three different ones. It was so much fun. Air New Zealand, I would say gets a seven. I loved it. It's at least a nine for me. Where do you rank Lufthansa first? 11, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> for the flight attendant. And that is the triple seven that will be taking us to Auckland currently seated on the ground. I don't think we've made a category for what happens when the flight gets delayed. Oh my gosh, we're moving. It's okay. happening. Okay, we're doing this. It's happening. Oh my God! Okay, it's happening! And actually boarding the plane goes into the check-in process and moving it down to a seven. Best way that I could describe it is chaos. Hi! Okay. This is so weird. All right, this is home sweet home. I'm just letting the initial shock wear off for a moment, and then I'll give a seat tour. Oh, 
Hi. Welcome drink in a real glass. Let's explore the seat a little bit. The chair itself is pretty comfy. The TV? I actually quite like it. Looks like there is a huge selection. They don't have the office or friends. What am I supposed to watch? Please be kidding. <laughs> Air New Zealand wins the award for the most awkward business class seat configuration. The only other business class that we've ever flown like this was JetBlue, but I'm pretty sure that the dividers between the seat were higher. I'm just looking at a lot more people's heads. Somehow feel like I'm inconveniencing people just by putting my feet up. I would just like to point out that any day in business class is light years better than a day in economy. But it's also just kind of fun to be a bit opinionated. I promise I'm not spoiled. Is there any default back to be subject to the overhead locker? What's the locker's out for? Please close the locker for the World's most awkward buddy seat. Or it can be a foot rest. I vote foot rest. Other observations. We have both an outlet and a USB. I can find my seat with the press of a button. Goodbye. I can already hear the noise of the dishes. So hopefully we get our food soon. Thank you. Wow. For our entree, we have a piece of warm bread, quinoa. I love a good salt and pepper. Delicious. Got some garlic bread and olive oil. Yummy. I believe that's the best bread I've ever had on an airplane. Three cards here. Trying a New Zealand white wine. Admire the pinky. Anytime there is free Wi-Fi on a plane that is strong enough to stream YouTube videos, it's going to majorly increase the entertainment score for me because no matter how good the TV show and movie offering is on a plane, I prefer to catch up with my favorite YouTube videos anytime I'm in the air. That was just the appetizer. Looks like our main is polenta with tomato vegetables and some sauteed spinach. Oh, yeah. Good stuff. I'm coming to the realization that the challenge with this scoring system is I'm not exactly sure what I'm comparing this flight to. This flight is less than three hours long, so if you compare it to domestic first class flight in the US, obviously this is way better. Even if you take into account the awkward seating arrangement, this is much better than sitting right next to a stranger in a seat that barely reclines, considering that this one lays flat. A seat reclines a grand total of six inches. However, if we're comparing this to first class Singapore or Emirates, it obviously falls short of that. So I think our scoring system needs to be a little bit more defined. We are very much learning in this video and totally open to suggestions in the comments for how we can make this better. I love this bathroom. There's an actual airplane window in here, so it's very well lit. Pretty standard size and toilet setup. I will say the soap is special. It smells really yummy. There are no additional amenities though, so obviously it's no Emirates first class with a shower and the whole shebang. But I'm a fan. Without a doubt, my favorite part though is the view from the toilet. <laughs> Please take care when opening the overhead locker for the item you can pull it out. If you have a domestic connection here today, it's an awkward, not to be a custom of the immigration. So the next time you fly with these dealers on the Bravo Network, we welcome you back again soon. Thank you have a fit of these again. Katewa. Seeing that Emirates A380 sitting on the runway right there is reminding me of our first flight of the year and what I would give to do that over again. To get to spend a day and a half in Emirates first class. That was one of the best flights we've ever taken and would probably score a 98 out of 100. My analysis may not sound very scientific. Thank you. Hopefully we are going to get to check out the flagship lounge, although we did land 30 minutes late. We already had a short layover to begin with, so um, we'll see how this goes. I think so far we have enough information to rate the seats, the staff, and the food. The seats for me, four out of 10. Honestly, after the initial shot, I'd give it like a nine. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Privacy on plane seats is more important for us because we're trying to film something and it's extremely awkward to film when other people can see you. Excuse me? Sorry? Pardon me? Very awkward. All right, it took about two seconds to get through transit security and now we are heading to the Air New Zealand flagship lounge. I feel like Air New Zealand is kind of like the Prius of airlines. It's eco-friendly, it's reliable, but it's nothing over the top or anything, anything to really get excited about. <laughs> I will say the chandelier was prettier in Sydney, but this one's nice. From one vegan to a meat eater. 
The crispy pork belly smells delicious. <laughs> we have a salad bar. Looks delicious. And once again, we stayed in the lounge too long. We only got a few minutes in that lounge. And even though it was packed, the bartender poured us a wine tasting, even though we didn't really have time for it. And the food that we did try was really good. Somebody had to review <laughs> their New Zealand business class. Lab went off of. What do you think, Kara? Less chaotic? Um, yes, but we got here at a better time than last time. Oh, there's mood light. This does feel newer. Does it look the same? It's a newer version of the same thing. Did your children stay with them turns or clear of any moving parts? Ensure your seatbelt is upright, armrest to lower it, and window shade to open. Okay, so far everything feels pretty much the same. Perhaps a little newer, and we have this cute little amenity kit plus a menu. Showing kind of feels like paper. We have socks. These are, no doubt, the cutest socks we've ever gotten on a flight. They have stripes. Mouthwash. A wooden toothbrush. Ooh. Kawa Kawa Bomb. Oh, wow. Big fan. Big fan of the Kawa Kawa Bomb. Harakiki seed oil and Manuka water hand and body cream. <laughs> Nate's laughing at me, but he just doesn't know how great this is yet. Last but not least, we have classic earplugs and a pin. That is the most Prius amenity kit I've ever seen. Functional, eco-friendly, and nothing to get too excited about. I'm excited about it, regardless of what Nate says. Our dinner for the night is a total surprise. It looks like rice with chickpeas and maybe carrots. Tastes like a carrot. Getting my bad name. Finally, from all of the team, I hope you've enjoyed flying with the New Zealand on the Star Alliance Network. Take care, bye Taiwan, and we wish you a safe holiday here. All right, we are back at the airport. We have one last short flight until we get to our final destination, and then we will give you the final rankings for Air New Zealand Business Class. I'm going to say it. At first glance, I think Bora Bora might be more beautiful than the Maldives. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this is where we've ended up. I am heaven. So excited to share more of this place with you in a future video. But we are going to attempt to grade our Air New Zealand business class flight. Check in. 7 out of 10 because of the chaos getting onto the plane on the first flight. Lounge, 8 out of 10. I mean, the only way it could improve is if there was a sit-down restaurant with, like, servers. Better champagne. Free massages. Seat, I say 4. That was the most awkward business class seat I've ever sat in. Okay, bed. The bed itself was so cozy. We give the bed a seven, super comfortable. Food? I would give the food like a six. Same. Drinks? The New Zealand wine was 10 out of 10 for me. Eight. Okay, nine, nine for the drinks. Amenity kit. Oh, I loved it. I'd say the staff was a solid eight. Yeah, free as They just kind of like... <laughs> bathroom. For what it was, I'm going to give it a seven. Entertainment's going to get a six. Yeah. It should have been a four, but the free Wi-Fi gave it two extra points. Drum roll for the final total for Air New Zealand business class in the first ever Karen Nate rankings. That was a lot. 71. Only a 71? That actually feels yeah. decently accurate. Maybe we came up with a good system. And if you owned a Prius, what would you rank that? Probably like a 71. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go enjoy the sunshine. Everything is pretty much the same. Excuse me. Hello. <laughs> Do you want it back? <laughs> quack. <laughs> quack. <laughs> quack, quack, quack. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Oh man, no shame.